All right, hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Um, my name is Kwame and this is... Elaine. Yeah, and it's usually my channel. It's okay, but, you know, from time to time, especially from... Is it two weeks ago that we recorded our video? Yeah. So, yeah, from time to time, my wife shows up on the channel. And last two weeks, we recorded our first partnership. And today, we're going to talk about something that... Partnership. <laughs> yeah, isn't the first okay. partnership recording? Yeah. But today we're talking about a topic that we think uh, we can both add our experiences uh, experiences on yeah on uh, because we're talking about culture shock mm -hmm. and we both experienced that Kwame when he visited the Netherlands for the, the first, time, first time which was 2017 and I came to Ghana in 2015 and I've been back and forth quite a lot yeah. so uh, I definitely experienced culture shock yeah but before we dive into this we thought it would be good to dive, to share with you the, uh, the definition, definition. Yeah, the definition of culture shock yeah. first. So you can read it. So yeah, culture shock is the feeling of disorientation experienced by someone when they are suddenly subjected to an unfamiliar culture, or way of life, or set of attitudes, which strangely enough, not strangely enough, you know, I'm too known sometimes. No, not too known sometimes. I'm actually too known most of the time. Before we traveled to the Netherlands, I was telling her that, you know, I didn't think that culture shock is a thing that I would experience because, you know, I'm open-minded enough. You know, I've seen, I, I mean, I've seen it in movies. I know how you people live or yeah. how, you, you know, it is. Not knowing that when you actually land there and experience it is completely different. So, yeah, I got a bit ahead of myself. Yeah, definitely. And I was, you know... And I was even trying to kind of tell you subtly, subtly like you will experience it. Yeah. But you I, were I, very like, no, no, I won't. No, not me. Um, Never. So then I just retreated and thought to myself, let them just experience <laughs> it. And then when it comes, we can. Oh, and I did. Yes. I did experience it. Um, I, I'll start from the beginning where, you know, landing or arriving in the Netherlands, you know, how everything was and like upon arrival I was like whoa okay first f for what was first thinking for me was like literally lifting my body all the way onto another continent like I'm walking <laughs> yeah. somewhere that is completely you know, new. it's different from driving your car to another place. This mm -hmm. is completely different, new. And I was so shocked to see, like, you know, in the summer, the sun was shining, yes, but the sky was, like, blue. It was, like, the weather was chill. Like, the sun is out. It's crispy, clear. And it's, it's like, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. She did say it, but the good thing is I didn't even react all I know is I was smiling to myself like an idiot, like, oh, this is really nice. And it was clean. I was like, where, where is the, you know, I'm not saying that I expected to see dirt. Yeah, but, but dust. There's no dust. Yeah, there's no dust. The, there's no, yeah. like, where is it? Where is the sand? <laughs> <laughs> so that was um, a pleasant surprise. Let me just say that culture shock isn't always negative. Yeah. So it was a pleasant surprise for me to, I mean, experience that. What, what yeah. about you when you first arrived? Well, I had the experience the other way around because um, in the old airport, when you would arrive at the airport in Ghana, you from That's the 2015, plane, that time. 2015, yeah. you would immediately be in the outside. Like you would walk down the plane. Yeah. So the smell is so distinctive. Like there's no, well, I haven't been to all the places in the world, but... I feel that there's no smell like Ghana smell. Yeah. Like it literally Hits welcomes you. you and the heat hugs you like, welcome home. And every time I walk out of the plane, well, now we don't come to the outside because of the new airport, but it was, it, the smell is always so welcoming. For you is welcoming. Like, oh, now it's like home. Like, like you Ghana, smell it okay. and like, I'm back. When, so, when, I, when I go back, it wasn't welcoming. I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Ah. And what else stood out for you in the country? 
Um, so yeah, from arrival to my first hour, especially like, you know, leaving the airport, like the efficiency mm-hmm. and the infrastructure, like how do you have like a four lane, one branching out this, you know, even leaving the airport with your, your tickets, getting out and everything was like spot on. And I was just confused because I mean, over here, my experience or whatever it is even there's not so much complex in terms of roads and you know uh infrastructure whatever it is and i'm wondering how are they able to know exactly where to make their exit and how long do you like how often do you get lost before you find your you know proper grounds or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and i remember thinking that wow like the road is so smooth like smooth (laughs) the infrastructure like i was i was uh, funny enough, um, it was your mom that picked us up. Yeah. And she, she, because she wanted to talk to me, she allowed me to sit in the front seat and just take everything in. I was experiencing everything. And I was looking on her dashboard and she was going around like 120, 140 and just talking to me. And that, that felt like 60 mm-hmm. because the road was, the road was yeah, that good. And I, was, I was like, whoa. Yeah. But it, it was pleasant for me because I could see myself existing in this space in the long term because when you're here, you complain a lot about some of these yeah. things. So your first phase was a bit amazement and... Amazement and... and disbelief. Pleas- yes, ple- <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Like, yeah. oh, wow. So, yeah. The, the, I think the for villager. me, but I also arrived in the night in the first time in Ghana. For me, my culture shock was more that I became very shy. So I felt a bit small. Like I didn't dare to do a lot of things. Yeah. And I remember uh, the first time I had a room at the uh, University of Ghana International Student Hostel. So that was where I was staying and my room was opposite night market. And I remember the first night I didn't dare to go on the balcony to look at the market because I wasn't even sure what it was because I'm familiar with markets, but not one during the night yeah, and not one that looks like the one in Ghana. And I was just like, what is that? And I didn't. So I peeked through the window. Wait, did you actually think that uh, somebody would see you and wonder why somebody was... I was just very, like, timid and shy. I didn't dare yeah. to show myself. I, got, I, was like, I was like a turtle, like, like everything yeah. in. And I even remember... <laughs> because uh, in the room, there was a fan on the ceiling because it's really hot. That is normal yeah. in Ghana. I didn't know that because I just arrived. And... So I didn't know that you should even keep the fan on in the night. Because I thought you don't leave electricity, like machines with electricity on in the night. So what did I do? I put the fan on really hard so that there would be cool breeze. And then I turn it off, like go to bed real quick and sleep. But it was hot. But only later I discovered that you can just sleep with the fan. That's the whole purpose. I I'm didn't sorry. know. I'm sorry. I'm I didn't sorry. know. I didn't know. I think I had so. a similar thing, if I should say. I had a similar thing, maybe in the opposite or reverse, where almost every building I entered, I kept looking for fan and AC, and I couldn't see any of it. I mean, I knew, I know, come on, you have your winter and all these things, whatever, but in a summer or in a, in a, in a month where it's a bit, you know, warm. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't you need, like, an emergency, you know, ventilation machine or something? So it was strange for me to enter a building, and almost every building you'd enter is just, you know, glass, concrete, and no, you know, machines, no AC, no fan, nothing. So it was a bit weird. I, I, in my mind, I kept wondering, what if I'm warm in the night? Mm-hmm. But you were never warm. <laughs> no, I was never warm. It's like, no. wow. Okay, so that was that was um, one of the things that stood out for me that, you know, it took a, a little while for me to get used to. Yeah. And but then I loved it um, when I got used to it. Oh, sorry, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. What uh, stood out for you people-wise or culture-wise? Uh, for the people and how they behaved, um, I just wondered why they were so efficient. Mm-hmm. 
like how can they be so it seemed too proper for my liking almost not human like robotic yeah mm -hmm. like i wondered like what was going on why do these people like everybody was just going about their business they know where they were going they were doing yeah. exactly what like they needed to do and leaving not interacting with each other is just very efficient you would tell somebody that like in conversation um oh yes so let's have let's meet up around like four and they don't even use around like the, the <laughs> yes. like around four no, it's four <laughs> four four thirty four fifteen like you'll go to the train mm -hmm. station for example and you know, they tell you it's coming at 4.30 and the most delay you have, unless they announce that it's a complete delay, the most delay you have in it arriving is just a few seconds. Yeah. A minute at most. So it felt uh, a bit soulless. Yeah, and I remember that that was also what you struggled with. That yeah. Was, I think after the first day, you were very frustrated and you were like, I think this place is soulless. Yeah, like, where are the people? I was wondering, where yeah. are the people? Nobody's minding you. Everybody's just going about their business. It, yeah and it was just a bit difficult for me to, to deal with to, like, but for me grasp. that was also difficult to hear not because i think it's not true but because i saw that you were struggling with it and it's my motherland so for me i was like oh no he doesn't like it no. you know and that's <laughs> but that was a culture shock you were still disoriented from like finding your way and how to go about it because I think what you observed is very true. Netherlands is very task oriented. Yeah. So we go about things. We're always on the go. We're always going. So we're always doing something where everything has like a goal. While in Ghana, I feel the life is more relationship oriented. So it's yes, about a little bit more relaxed. Who you meet, you 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 will connect. And in Netherlands, you will ne not necessarily connect on a relationship base. You will connect on a task. Yeah. In Netherlands, you can come to work and work with your colleagues and know nothing about them. Yeah. You, of course, you want to because you work together, but you don't have to. You're like you can connect on a task, and that's it. Well, here in Ghana, I really learned that, you know, the art of small talk. Like it has so much value. It which, has so which much. I, you're doing like extremely well. She's actually doing more small talk or relationship. Well, I've um, come to really see the way, value. Way way better than I'm I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm. I think I think in a way in a way we are opposite souls because I I I felt like like I said I could live in the Netherlands because when people said they wanted to meet at four they met at four when you wanted to do yeah. something with somebody it was the task you finish it it's well done you shake hands and yes another thing handshake handshake was so firm and there was nothing like like you know when we do like yo and you do this and you snap. Yeah. As soon as they shake your hands, they move their hands like and open it. I was just wondering, oh, bro, like. Yeah, you don't really hold. Like it's intimate. Yeah, like we you couldn't even it's too intimate. You couldn't even hold. shake hands and like hold for a bit. They just be like, uh, uh. <laughs> I was like, whoa, yeah. can you just calm down? Yeah. You get it. So I I kind of you know would have adjusted or liked it in in that sense, especially with the time. I I struggle a lot with time issues here when you have to meet people and being late and all these things and being very relaxed about it in the netherlands you tell somebody you want to meet and pff, immediately it's in the agenda yeah you just mark but it for me it is kind of been the other way around because i came from that very task oriented like efficient uh system and then here in ghana it's another system because time is here not linear it's not like one thing happens after the other and we can kind of control it that's a bit of the mind frame in netherlands yeah and here it's i'm coming so by god's grace i mean if I everything arrive. goes well <laughs> i will arrive and in a, first it's frustrating because you're not sure what will happen in a day but now i really appreciate it because here in ghana people still leave a bit of space like a, for life to happen. While mm. in Netherlands, you can plan your full day and you will know it will happen exactly to that, but you will lose out on the magic of, of spontaneity, life, yeah. of life itself. And yeah. that's what I really, like Ghana really told me to appreciate the, the magical small things because here we leave some space for that. Yeah. 
sometimes that that's negative because of all the traffic you don't know when you arrive but it's also like bumping into a friend by accident and you can just tell the person like oh i'm coming but i ran into a friend so i'll be a bit later and and that's holding that space for life to happen that's something i really appreciate uh from yeah like yeah, much more here. relaxed yeah 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 and another thing that i would say i struggled with <laughs> i know what's coming is food bro bread <laughs> i like food i like food a lot and here we're used to you can ah, you can eat wache or jollof in the morning so long as you know where the vendor is or whatever it is you can eat banku in the afternoon if you want that same day mm. and in the evening you can eat something heavy 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 for me personally that's mm -hmm. what i do i mean you may be a Ghanaian who has a different you know that's also fine but even with your breakfast it's slightly heavier than what i knew or what i experienced in the netherlands so in, they wake up and coffee, just a, a cup of coffee. The most they'll add to it is just a light snack. And that's it, that's breakfast. And y let me come back a bit, let me just like, go back a bit with time. You know when we are, how we are used to waking up at six? My body clock would wake up at six and I'm awake. No. No, 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 nobody wakes up at six. <laughs> Were you up at six? Like it has to be from 7.30 or eight. Yeah. I was just like, whoa. We like our sleep. For efficient people, you wake up very late. Mm -hmm. But that, that, okay, yeah, so that was it. And, and food, breakfast, coffee, that's it. And I was thinking, wait, so where's the food? Because over here, you can actually have Milo or something. <laughs> you go to the hospital, for example. I remember when I was a kid, you go to the hospital and the doctor or whoever is taking care of you asks you, have you eaten? Then you say no. But no, you haven't had anything in the morning. It's like, oh, I just had Milo and bread. Yeah, but you, had, you ate something. It was like, no, but that doesn't count. You get it? So for, for coffee to be the main or the first meal, very light and easy, that's not even that bad. What, <laughs> what took me out was the fact that when it was time for lunch, Guess what these people wanted to eat? Bread. <laughs> bread. They wanted to eat bread. Like, why? What, where, like, and, and even the bread, you know, just having, you know, a sandwich. It's not as big. It's not heavy. It's not like you're eating, you know, a, a huge chunk, like a burger type bread. No, it's just sandwich. And I, I, I really struggled. I really struggled with the food because I always wanted warm food. And yeah. even with looking for warm food, you didn't have a lot of, you know, food places or restaurants or eateries open up before midday. Yeah. Or even, even if they were open, they didn't serve warm food until after midday. Yeah. So it's a very different eating culture because so, the food in Ghana is so heavy. So you can, you eat... And then you can go on for four, five, six hours, yep. and then you eat again. But in Netherlands, we have like small, small breakfast that we eat some fruit at eleven. Then we have lunch, which is sandwich. Then in the afternoon, we eat something sweet, like a cookie or or something sour, if you like sour, <laughs> salty. I mean, yeah. And then at six, you will have a warm meal for the night, and then you are done eating. So it's like snack, 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 snack. While here in Ghana, you eat heavy and then i was like eat heavy again and it's so different so we we're as a couple we were also struggling because i wanted to find him food that he liked and that he would full, be full with but it was really hard yep because in netherlands you can maybe get bread and some soup but that's like how big the meal will get it won't get any bread. bigger did you, did you mention bread again so we <laughs> what usually happened was her mom when she made dinner the previous day she yeah. would cook enough for Kwame to be able to have yes. the leftover. Yeah. Come home with it because we didn't we didn't live with uh, my parents. We lived with a couple of friends of hers. So come home with it so that in the morning yeah. I can warm the rice and the meat and all those yeah. things and chow down. Yeah, and that's also how we did it the second time because then Kwame visited me in Netherlands and then I would also make a bigger. Uh, dinner yeah. and then you would eat it the next day so that was our way of coping with it but it took took some time to get used to, to it. get used to it and food is so important like food is comfort so yeah. if you're not comfortable it was really a struggle and i i, for I, you. I become a completely different person yeah. when i'm hungry 
So that's not also a good thing. But what about you? How was, how was food like for you? Well, I love the Ghana food. Yeah. I had to get used to the spiciness and I I'm still am. I'm still not really a big hero with spiciness, but I think I adapted. And I love the Ghana meals. Like, Which one is your favorite? I like red red and I like fufu. That's my favorite with groundnut soup and goats. <laughs> What was, what was your first time? Like? The first time I ate fufu was uh, at my first workplace. So my colleagues made sure that I ate well. And they would also help me finding places to eat. Because that was a struggle for me. Because in Netherlands, you don't have these street vendors. Is that what you call them? Street mm-hmm. vendors. Yeah. That sell the food. You would go to a supermarket or you would go to a little store. Where they sell your, you a sandwich. But here in Ghana, like, I wouldn't even recognize that it was a food place. Like, I wouldn't even know what to look for. So luckily, my colleagues were very helpful with that, like, pointing out what I could eat. And have you eaten? Okay, where would you want to get it? And then it would come with me. Yeah. And then one time they took me out for fufu. But of course, I knew what it was, but I never ate it before. And I loved it. But I was covered in fufu till my elbow. Soup. The soup. Yeah. yeah. I was just, and fufu as well, because I didn't know how to eat it. I wasn't used to eating with my hands. And I, I, I love goats. So maybe that's, <laughs> they did well with the first time. But the goat wasn't a polished piece of meat. Like yeah. you could just eat. It, there was bone, there was fat, there was muscle. There but was, that's, that's, that's the, you know, that's the... Yeah, but I didn't know how to eat. So it was like, <laughs> like I think my whole face was covered in soup and meat and everything. But in, anyway, I managed, and I really love fufu still. So we like to go to, for fufu every Sunday. It's, it's to, yeah, it's our Sunday ritual. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So um, that that was about food for me. It was a struggle. And <sighs> I think what's living in Ghana, and I'm still getting used to it every day, is that yeah. um, you move from being a majority in my own country. So in Netherlands. Uh, like I am surrounded by Dutch people, so I'm in a majority. But here, suddenly I was surrounded by Ghanaians. Yeah. And I also stood out because of my appearance. So I'm white, I'm female, I'm European, I'm tall. All these things um, stand out the height. from the norm yeah. in society here. And I, through my living here in Ghana, it really made me aware of what all these... It made me aware of my appearance. So what effect does it have that I'm white? What effect does it have that I'm a female? What effect does it have that I'm from Europe? What effect does it have that I'm tall? All these things you kind of need to unpack to really get to know yourself well. Because it does have an effect on your interactions, whether you want it or not. So... I really try to be very aware of kind of the impact it has yeah. on like your surroundings. Yeah. And I do stand out a lot. I mean, a lot of people shout Obruni and they interact with me differently. They maybe have different intentions because of how I appear in society. Yeah. And you really, I, I feel that's my duty to learn more about that and unpack it. So I, discover more about myself and also how we relate to each other in society. But I'm wondering how it was for you coming from a majority of living being, in Ghana, yeah, being to, in Ghana to switching to the Netherlands where you're surrounded by Dutch people. Oh, well, for culture shock, I mean, I think this conversation is something we can actually have a main uh, conversation on later on. But for culture shock in the cities, um, strangely, not strangely, but um, in a good way for the big cities like <clears throat> Amsterdam which is full of tourists and mm-hmm. Rotterdam which is more mixed yeah. which I realized you didn't have people staring at you but in, in cities some, some parts of uh, Utrecht and especially in Houghton that's when I could feel that I was yeah, should I say small fit. yes standing out yeah. or it kind of felt out of place mm-hmm. because for those places, um, people seldom see somebody like me. And so you would yeah. feel that you're standing out and the look was more like, uh, is he lost or something? Why, why, you know? So that didn't f- 
feel very welcoming. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so as a black man, your appearance as a black man in the environment stood out at yeah. that moment. Uh, because Houghton is quite a small village and it's very white. Yeah. Like, I cannot make it any other way. It's very white. Yeah. Uh, so f for Kwame to enter in that surrounding, like, people would look... You saw people wondering. And even when we would walk together, we would get, That's like... That, it, was, it was worse when we walked together because people would literally stare and not even um, try and steal glances. They would stare, like, wonder what yeah. is going on. Which, which was, which was uh, first unsettling and later on I was just like, you know what, I don't care. And it was kind of fun to see the shock on their faces sometimes. And mm -hmm. speaking of shock on faces, you know how we're used to like um, buying things with cash? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like over here you buy things with cash and you usually have your money with you. Like it's not credit card or digital payment systems, which is catching on very yeah, much we're getting there yeah but <laughs> you would enter a store and netherlands is known for another thing i enjoyed netherlands is known for the discounts especially in the summer you see discounts on almost every store like you know discount this discount that but you would enter a shop and i have liquid i think fiscal cash on me almost all the time and i think also that people look at you a certain way it's, it's tied a bit to looking different or being a minority because most people are stereotyped there when they are my color, when they enter a place. So they don't walk into a store very confidently. That's how I have seen. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know that and I, I didn't feel the effect of it or I didn't have that. So I would usually walk into a store very like I'm just a regular person wanting to buy something. The confidence with which I walk into a store and pick up something or whatever it is, you can see from the corner of your eye, like, you know, yeah. at the counter that they are wondering how, like, you're so feeling free and you pick up a sneaker or whatever it is, pick up a couple of items, put it in, and you come and they tell you it's, like, maybe 150 euros and you take your wallet out, not take a card out. You're taking, like, 50 euros, three, yeah. and you're giving it to the person. What happens is that they're scanning, they, they, they look, they scan they, like six times. They want to check yeah. if the note is correct and everything. So that so, was yeah. one of the things that um, stood out for so me. So how you unpack this is that one, because you stood out as a being a minority and your appearance made you like remarkable for yeah. the counter person. And then secondly, because you're not used to paying by card. So the cash even made you stood out more, more. which made it a weird or it, it affected the interaction, yeah. right? Yeah, it did yeah, affect kind the of, interaction. So it was even a layered experience. It is a layered experience because yeah. they kind of make it seem like, where did you get this money from? Yeah, that's how you felt. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking to myself. Which I find very difficult to, not difficult, like I want to hear it, but I also feel responsible in a way because you experienced it in my motherland, Yeah. which is... I find hard to digest sometimes that that actually happens. It's no, it's it's not on you. I mean, it's I more the environment that responds very weirdly. But maybe we should leave that at another yeah another conversation. <laughs> but for me, one maybe to add one last one was at my first workplace. I was doing research and I was I had my uh, I brought my laptop because I was uh, taking a, doing a lot of uh, participatory observation. So that's literally jotting down everything that happens. And I remember um, I was sitting in a, a room where it's a, with a lot of colleagues, but it, there was always so much going on. So I was listening to music just to focus on my notes and what I heard that day. And I was just typing like, duh, 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 like I was just in my zone. And suddenly I <laughs> look up and they're like literally like a group of people, like five people Behind staring you. at me. And I was like, oh no, what did I do? And then they're like, where did you learn how to type that fast? And I was just like, oh. Like, like is it a thing? I didn't even know it was a thing. Like, yeah. I didn't even know I was doing it fast. Like, because I was just used to it. So that experience on itself, like, made me 
like because you move to a different environment, it makes you aware of Hold that on. some things are skills without even pass. I want to wrap it up. Anyway. <sighs> so. Um, because you're viewed in a different environment, suddenly you see it as a skill where I just thought I'm typing just the way I type. I didn't see it as outstanding, but because suddenly your colleagues are like, oh, why did you learn how to type? I was like, oh, uh, in my room, in my room, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that's like, there's always a balance yeah. in experiencing or being in a different environment. And I hope we, Give you a little bit of insights into... Yeah, I think there's um, more, but when we do remember them at some point, maybe we'll be chipping them in yeah. subsequent videos when we do show up. But if you have any questions about our experiences, yeah. or maybe other questions for us as we are here, you can drop them in the comment box. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're presenting. Yes. Good. So you can wrap it up. So yeah, thank you very much for watching our video. Um, we're going to be having these conversations as often as we can. And we hope that when we do well, you engage us with your comments. And if you have any experiences which are similar to this, of course, let us know. And let's have conversations about these things so that we can, you know, unpack and break them down. So yes, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And yeah, thumbs up is very important. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, our channel, <laughs> do that and hit the bell icon so that you get notified anytime <clears throat> we post a video. Thank so. you so much for watching. <laughs> I like that you're we'll See you next time. And next time we will probably talk about long distance relationship because we went through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you have any other comments, any other suggestions, for episodes, please let us know because uh, we want to uh, share what we know yeah. and share our experience. We are not experts, but we are doing our best to show you a little bit of what we've learned throughout our journey. So, bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I must be quite surprised that you get it like that.